Good morning. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to this time of worship. A special welcome to those of you who are our guests. Thank you for taking the time to be here, and we welcome you to this act of worship as a church family. Uh, thank you for those of you who are joining us online, as we still have many folks who are checking in that way. We are glad you are here, and thank you for taking the time to be here. Lots of things are going on in the life of this congregation as we draw close to Christmas, and here are a few announcements in video form to let you know all of those things. Here are this morning's announcements. Instead of feeding ourselves another Thanksgiving dinner, we are excited to offer the opportunity to feed others by packing 25,000 meals that will feed families around the world. Please join us tonight in the FLC from 5 to 7 p.m. for our Feed the Hunger Packathon. Everyone is needed. Reserve your spot by registering online. Registration will be capped at 150 people, so please register if you plan to attend. Reminder, our church office will be closed this Wednesday, November 24th, and Thursday, November 25th for the Thanksgiving holiday. Please mark your calendar. We will deliver Thanksgiving dinner this Thursday on Thanksgiving morning to neighbors who would otherwise spend the holiday alone. If you would like to help prepare the meal or bake pies for this event, please contact Debbie Kirby. If you want to deliver meals for these neighbors, please contact Charlie Blackburn. It's that time again. Our monthly first Thursday lunch is in two weeks on Thursday, December 2nd from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the FLC. Dine-in or takeout is available. To order ahead, please call the church office by next Monday, November 29th to ensure availability. You are also invited to come and pick chicken on Wednesday, December 1st at 10 a.m. in the FLC. No experience is necessary. Thank you to all who are purchasing gifts for local children living in foster care through the Child Advocacy Center's Foster Care Angels. Gifts should be wrapped with the angels securely attached on the outside and returned to the church by Thursday, December 2nd. If you have any questions, please contact Carol Brown. Happening on Sunday, December 5th at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in the FLC is our Harbor Worship Praise Team's Christmas Presentation. Please plan to join us as they begin our season of Advent with a time of congregational worship celebrating our Lord and Savior's birth. There will also be an 815 traditional chapel worship service offered on this Sunday as well. Also happening Sunday, December 5th is our Mission X Possible which will reveal all of our upcoming mission trips and opportunities in 2022. Bring some Christmas joy to our shut-in neighbors by purchasing items for Christmas bags. These will be available the week of December 5th and 12th for everyone to fill with cards, mementos, and goodies on a table near the library hallway outside the sanctuary. The list of shut-ins will be available on that table. For more info, please contact Judy Brockman. The Media Center will be opening back up on Sunday, December 5th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is located in FLC 204. Self-checkout is available from 9 to 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. There will be a volunteer there to assist you from 10 to 11 a.m. each Sunday. Self-checkout will also be available Monday through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Media Center contains a large selection of Christian fiction and nonfiction books with children's books and many DVDs. If you would be willing to volunteer one hour every two months, please contact Sara Lee.
Please stand, look to your bulletin for this morning's greeting. I invite you to please respond with what is written in bold. Most gracious God, you crown the year with your goodness. We praise you We bless you for the order and constancy of nature for the beauty of the earth and sky and sea, and for the providence that year by year supplies our need. We thank you for your blessing on the work of those who plow the soil and sow the seed, and have now gathered the fruits of the earth. And with our thanksgiving for these blessings, accept our praise, O God, for the eternal riches of your grace in Christ our Lord, to whom you Father, and the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor and worship forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. That's on page number 139, and we will be singing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5, and I believe the words will also be on the screen. Good morning. I ask that you please join me in prayer this morning. Loving God, we turn our hearts to you on this day, giving thanks, mindful of your many gifts. For each one may be us to be grateful. For each one may we see and understand your blessing. For each one, we are to Hopefully, Father, understand your abundance, your abundant love. Please remind us to be generous with others as you are with us. Lord, please forgive us for our 
focused on our comforts. Help us, Lord, to know how to be nudged outside of our comfort zone because that's where our growth comes. That's where our intimacy with you is recognized. Lord, we praise you. We rejoice in you. We give thanks to you. Let us give thanks by saying the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Is it possible? I invite you to come find out with us today at 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock because that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the FLC Center, packing 25,000 meals. Love for you to see this video to see how it will be done. made a conscious decision as a congregation to, rather than having a meal that fed ourselves, to embark upon an activity that would feed other people at this time of year, and this is the result of that. We've done various mission work and projects on the Sunday night before Thanksgiving in the past, and this year, well, we're going to see if we can't reach that goal of packing 25,000 meals there's still room to simply uh, show up. We'll find something for you to do if you haven't signed up. But we look forward to seeing as many of you as we can back here as we celebrate God's goodness and as we give back to God in this way. We continue to give back to God through our offering. For those of you who are at home, uh, you, may find, you may give online. And lots of ways to do that. Uh, to simply click on the tabs that are under the Give section of the website. If you were here today and you brought an offering, we will be collecting that offering at this time. I'd like to invite our ushers forward. <laughs>
Our, our scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, 6th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. If you are able, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told those who had gathered in the crowds for the Sermon on the Mount these words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor weep nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not, mu how, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the, the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and good Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to gather here in your sanctuary. And we ask that as your word has been read, that it may be proclaimed in accordance with your good intentions for your people. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. But the stated goal of this sermon is very simple. I want you to leave here deeply grateful for at least one thing. Just one thing. And I, I think I can make you grateful for something if I tell you a story. It's a story I, I certainly didn't live, but I read about uh, several years ago. There was a book out by Stephen Johnson called The Ghost Map. And it's about a series of deaths that occurred tragically in London in 1854. Uh, and the reason it's called the ghost map is that someone began tracking where these folks died. Turns out they all died from cholera. Now, we as modern people know that car car cholera, whoop, this may be a long sermon, at least for you all, happens when groundwater gets contaminated by sewage. The ghost map is all about how it was figured out that there was a connection between sewage and groundwater creating the disease because the popular opinion in those days, the belief was that the disease spread through bad smells. And so two people, uh, a Dr. Snow and an Anglican priest named Dr. Johnson, worked really hard to prove this correlation. So why did all this come about? Well, it came about because by 1850, there were over two and a half million people living in London. Think about it. Two and a half million people living in London, and they had no plumbing. I hope you're getting what I'm, I hope you're grateful for. <laughs> they simply took their waste and threw it out in the streets. Or they dug pits in the backyard. Some people just merely dumped it in the basement of their houses. There were actually people who were called muckrakers. If you've ever heard that term, it didn't originate with journalism, although it moved to journalism. But muckrakers who would take these long rakes, skim the cesspools, take what was on top, put it in wheelbarrows, and cart it out to the farmer's fields outside of the city. So the next time you complain about your job... Just think about it could always be worse because, yes, it can always be worse. 
So when they figured out that all of this problem with raw sewage was contaminating the groundwater, uh, London did respond and they undertook building a large municipal sewer system and developing indoor plumbing. So today, be grateful for your plumbing. If nothing else, be thankful. See, the reason I tell you this story isn't to prove to you that I read a book, although I want you to think I'm smart. And it's not to uh, remind you that I have the sensibilities of a seventh grade boy talking about potty humor. It's simply to point out that we take things for granted. When was the last time you thanked God for indoor plumbing? Right? We take things for granted. We have luxuries that many in the world still can't imagine. That almost everyone throughout the course of human history, it would seem like we live in the height of luxury. And neither of my parents, and this is still hard for me to believe, neither of my parents grew up with indoor plumbing. They grew up without houses. They did, neither had uh, plumbing in their home until they got married and got their own place. That's remarkable to me. Uh, outside my grandmother's old home uh, that my nephew now owns, is the, the outhouse still stands. And I think my grandfather left it there to remind everybody how bad things could be. <laughs> Once upon a time, my brother Chris was down there working, and he didn't want to go in and bother grandmother, because, well, if you go in and bother my grandmother, she'd feed you, she'd talk to you, she'd make you listen to the obituaries on the radio, and you'd never get out of her house. So he was down on the, their farm working and doing some stuff. He thought, I'll just go into the old outhouse and use that. Well, the problem was nobody had used it in about 25 years. And when he went in there, the floor fell out underneath him. It can always be worse, right? <laughs> Fortunately, no one had been in there in 25 years. And he, uh, I don't think he's ever moved so fast in his life as he did climbing out of there. We just simply take things for granted. Uh, we lose our ability to be awed and in wonder. And in some ways, in many ways, we then lose our ability to be truly grateful. And I got up this morning, I flipped the light switch, and light came on. If it's too hot in my house, I turn a knob on the wall. If it's too cold in my house, I turn a knob on the wall. And also, if it's too hot in my house, I'm reminded that um, my wife is just fine. Open a refrigerator that's full of stuff that's kept at the perfect temperature. Open a pantry and stare at it full of food, and I say, oh, there's nothing to eat in this house. You ever done that? We have so much to be grateful for, but often we stop looking. And so when Jesus is talking to this crowd that's gathered to hear him establish the framework for the very kingdom of God, he wants them to pay attention to what's around them. He wants them to look and see God all in their midst. Now, Jesus says a lot of very difficult things in the Bible. Things that are very hard to do. He tells us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as ourselves. And then he defines our neighbors as people who may not be next door to us, people who don't look like us. And he tells us that's who our neighbor are, neighbors are. That's hard to do. He tells us to love our enemies. That can be hard to do. He tells us to forgive, no, not seven times, but seven times, 70 times. That can be hard to do. So in this scripture passage, when he tells us to do not worry, that can be hard to do. Worry is as much of a pandemic in our world as COVID-19. Uh, we Part of how we operate our media and everything else is to get people's attention. And you get people's attention when you give them things to worry about. So it shouldn't be any surprise to us that everything that we see is encouraging us to worry about this, that, or something else. 
Now, Jesus doesn't tell us to be blind to what's going on in the world. We should pay attention. We need to know those things to be good citizens in the world. But there's a difference between knowing something and obsessing over something. Our entire culture seems to be obsessed over this or that, and it's driving us kind of insane. So gratitude has the ability to give us the right perspective, to help us see where God has blessed us, and to remind us that the God who's been faithful in the past is the God who is with us in the present and is the God who will be faithful in the future. Again, this doesn't mean that hard times won't come, because indeed they do. And I've been the pastor here long enough to know many of your stories, and some of you have been through truly, truly difficult things. Some of you are going through very difficult things right now. This isn't to discount that pain and hurt and suffering isn't part of our, jo- our journey. But what I'm wanting to lift up is that even in the midst of all of that, there are blessings, there is provision, there is hope. Jesus points this out to the folks. He says, don't worry, I don't, I don't get you people. I really don't. You, you worry about what you're going to eat. You worry about what you're going to wear. Oh, thank goodness we're very different from people 2,000 years ago, right? Isn't it, it's, it, humanity stays remarkably the same in some ways over the course of human history. You worry about what you're going to eat, worry about what you're going to wear, and he just simply says, look around. See, see these birds? That, they don't seem too worried, do they? Is it, doesn't God take care of them? God feeds them? And they said, look, look at the flowers of the field. Look how amazingly beautiful they are. Even Solomon wasn't clothed as well as they. And yet they only exist for a moment. But the God who <laughs> feeds the birds, who brings about the flowers, <laughs> you mean infinitely more to him than those things. And that God who's taking care of them who's blessing them, that God is there for you too. So let go of the worry. Trust, and this is what this takes. It's leaning into and trusting that God will prevail. That even in the midst of hardship and toil, God will win. It's trusting that God is invested in us. And that God really cares. That's an act of faith. But part of how we get there is by acknowledging those things that God has given to us. It reminds our hearts, our souls, our minds that God is present. That the kingdom of God that Jesus came to initiate is indeed at hand. And Jesus says this very clearly. Strive uh, But strive first for the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. In other words, get your priorities straight, people. Live first into the kingdom of God. Work first for the things of God. All these other things will be taken care of, but first live into the very kingdom of God. You don't have to look far to find places where gratitude can make a big difference in people's lives. Saw a, an interesting thing come across my newsfeed this week. A uh, man in Utah went to Papa John's. They didn't have his pizza ready. He had done it online on his phone. He got there, and the worker at Papa John's said, I'm sorry, but our phone system's down. Your order's not ready. I will put it in immediately, and it will be ready in just a few minutes. Well, the guy kind of loses it. Yells at the Papa John's person, uh, starts to get agitated. Uh, the employees feel threatened. They call the police. The police come. The guy gets out of there, only to come back after the police leave. So he's had time to think this through, evidently. And he shot into the Papa John's franchise three different times. You don't have to look far, far to find somebody who's angry and upset, do you? What difference would gratitude make in someone's life? Well, what if this gentleman 
rather than finding a reason to be upset, simply said, you know, it's pretty remarkable that I live in a day and an an age where I can get fed in about 10 minutes. That is remarkable. It's absolutely stunning when you think about it. If you'll wait 10 minutes, you'll have food that's hot. Uh, I'm not passing judgment over Papa John's whether it's good or not, but at least it'll be hot and it'll be something to eat. What if he said to himself, I am very fortunate to have the resources to be able to buy a pizza. I'm very fortunate that there are people working in this pizza shop. A little gratitude and in about 10 minutes could have kept the guy out of jail. See, gratitude is at the heart of the Christian experience. We are given this amazing gift, a relationship with God the Father Almighty, made possible through Jesus Christ, His Son, in the work of the Holy Spirit. We can't earn it. We can't uh, put a notch in our belt about that because we've done nothing, nothing to deserve that kind of love from God, yet God gives it to us freely. And we are to simply accept it, receive it. Gratitude then begins to shape our entire experience. Because then we can look at the blessings that do flow into our lives as the work of God. And when we see those as the work of God, it allows us not to hold on to them. This this is where many of us, myself included, get off track. See, when we receive God's blessing with a heart of gratitude, we're not supposed to be the end user. It's not supposed to stop with us. See, God doesn't call us to be sponges that simply soak up His goodness and His grace to contain within ourselves. No, He calls us to be a conduit, something that the blessings of God flow through. See, we're called to be more, much more like a stream than we are a pond. And if you've ever gone swimming in an old farm pond where everything runs into it and very little runs out, Well, I wouldn't recommend it. But have you ever gone swimming in a river that flows clean and clear? There's a difference. There's a big difference. We're called to be those people who don't hang on to our possessions for our own well-being. We're to trust that the God who has given to us will continue to give so that we can be part of of the blessing that God wants to extend back out into the world. Because when things run in and nothing goes out, that's a recipe for a spiritual disaster. It's a recipe for a home disaster too, by the way. It's just not how God intended it to work. And so God gives and we give to others. And then we become part of that cycle of grace. Part of making the world much, much better. What would it look like if all of us here today went out into our homes, our neighborhoods, wherever you may go this week, with a deep spirit of gratitude? What would it mean that when you see the cashier at the, in the grocery store who has about eight people lined up behind her because she's the only one working because the store couldn't hire enough people, that when you finally get up there, instead of the usual mumbling and grumbling about waiting in line, and that would be my issue, but to simply say, wow, how lucky am I that I can do this, that I can purchase food, that there's someone up here willing to help me and serve me, and that you simply passed on that gratitude to that cashier. That's just one thing. What would it look like if you maybe wrote a, a note to your teacher's parent, uh, to your, to your, I am having a hard time thinking today, to the parent, to the teacher. Wait a second. You've got kids. Write your teacher a thank you note. Let's stop right there. Good. I am glad that the communion liturgy is written down. (laughs) 
It is so easy to take things for granted. It's just so easy to walk by enormous blessings without ever seeing them or knowing that they exist. We get to choose what we focus on. Yeah, we can see the issues and the problems of the larger world, but we get to choose out of that bigger picture what we focus on. I hope and pray that Thanksgiving will open a door for us to focus on the right things. To take a few minutes to name to God Almighty what we're grateful for, even in the midst of struggle. And to say, thank you, thank you, and thank you. As we come to this table this morning, it's a reminder that this is the great thanksgiving. This is God's gift to us. This is the very presence of Christ somehow, some way, symbolically or, or real or however God wants to show up in this meal. We believe that God does something extraordinary in this. We believe that Christ is present in the breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup. Jesus is here. We are to be grateful. It's not by accident that this is called the Great Thanksgiving. And I invite you to turn to page 12 and join me as in an invitation and then a confession and pardon. So this is page 12 of your hymnals. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to please stand for the remainder of the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A couple of instructions for communion today. Everyone is invited. This is very important to know. Everyone who is here is invited. You need not be a member of this church. You need not be a member of the United Methodist Church or any church. Simply come looking to find the Lord and expect the Lord to be present in this meal. We will be receiving communion by uh, the bread will be offered. It's already pre-cut, so simply take a piece of the bread and then we'll be using small individual cups. And then after you take communion, you may leave the cups in the rail that are on the altar. Um, all is prepared and all is ready. And a final word for those of you who are going to be singing in the choir for the closing hymn. After you take communion, you may simply go back to the choir loft if you will be helping lead the closing hymn. All is ready and prepared and the ushers will direct you uh, by pews.
Lord, we give you thanks for all things. You are good to us. Your love it knows no end. We give you thanks for this holy mystery and the many ways which you bless us. Help us to acknowledge, pay attention, and simply be grateful 
for all that you have done through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is for the beauty of the earth. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. Will you please stand as we sing together? Thank you.